this video I'd like to discuss MOVs, which are metal oxide resistors. And I got an example of one right here. I'm going to demonstrate it to use my scope, my field piece throwaway meter, uh, and my amp clamp um, to show you what it actually does in the circuit. Uh, this is the MOV I have right here set up, and I'm going to get you the specs on that. You can see in, in the data sheet you got 275 uh, volts RMS, and that's where it's going to kick in and start to draw current. And you have the peak instantaneous current protection on the right hand side. This is a high voltage transformer I'm using out of a uh, microwave. This over here is a variac, and what it does is uh, I can get variable AC output. There's multiple taps off of the transformer. And so I got it set right now to 25 volts output. And I'm going to get uh, with that through the high voltage transformer. It's going to bump it up to uh, 500 volts, but I can get it up to uh, probably about 3,000 total with this variac. Normally, these varistors, what they do is they protect the circuit, so they're the first line of defense. Uh, you'll see them alongside a fuse, and when they're when they see an over voltage uh, condition, what happens is they shunt the excess current. Instead of going through the circuit, it will go through the varistor, and you're going to see that in action because I'm going to damage some varistors today. Um, and I'm also going to show you on the scope uh, what uh, what the waveform is uh, looking like when the current is shunted through the varistor. And there's the schematic cleaned up, obviously, here. Uh, we've got the source AC, the transformer, and the MOV. All right, we've got a little over 500 volts going to uh, the circuit, and we can see the waveform. It's a nice AC waveform like it should be. I do not have the varistor connected yet. And so what I'm going to do is uh, hook up the varistor and turn on the scope, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so I've got the varistor hooked up. Now what we're going to see is what happens when current is shunted through the varistor when you have over voltage. You can see the current here, we got about 300, you can see it's smoking, we got about 300 milliamps. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and put that thousand volts through there. I'm going to disconnect the variac so that you can see how much it's clamping the voltage. So I got to adjust the, the voltage down. So it's 1000 volts RMS, 3000 volts peak to peak that I'm putting across that varistor, and it's still uh, working. I'm gonna, now that I got the scale adjusted, I'm going to put the varistor back in line. Uh, to see how the ratio of clamping that we have, you, you remember, yeah, we have that nice large waveform. It's going to be very small when I put the varistor back in line. It's going to smoke again, but it's putting up a real good fight uh, because the uh, usually when you have a power surge on a line, a natural power surge from the uh, power company, then it's going to be quite instantaneous. Uh, between nanoseconds and milliseconds, it's not going to have a sustained uh, high voltage. You can obviously if you have a transformer go bad or something like that, but it's not it's not as common as the instantaneous spikes. So this thing is putting up quite a fight, and it's still working. So I'm going to put the voltage back across it. Yeah, so you can see how much it's clamping there. It's phenomenal. You can see it's smoking, and it's drawing 700 milliamps at 1,000 volts. So it's clamping it all the way down to 35 volts right now on 1,000 volts RMS. 
and that's just spectacular. It's probably gone through between 500 volts and 1,000 volts, you know, good probably 10 minutes at, at those voltages. So I'm very impressed with uh, the amount of uh, abuse this thing can take. All right, well, it's MOV1, Mike Carlson 0. <coughs> the, uh, it, it was drawing uh, at 2,000 volts. It was drawing 21 amps. And so it was uh, tripping my current limiter. Um, and, uh, and the breaker would probably soon follow, so I don't want to do that. But you can see it's all burned up. <coughs> But it actually is still working right now, even with a burn up like this. Um, it was uh, it was tripping my breaker at 2,600 watts. It was going through this component um, that's uh, 2,000 volts RMS and 1. Point, uh, 1.3 amps. So uh, this is this is a, this definitely exceeds my expectation of what these things can do. So uh, very impressed with these and fact that they when they clamp they actually clamp below the rated uh, voltage so this thing's uh, rated at uh, 275 and if it gets over voltage it it was clamping all the way down to um, 35 volts RMS so that's that's very impressive to me and uh, looks like the higher the voltage is uh, the more it overcompensates clamps. There's an overlay of the three voltages. Uh, the larger one is without the varistor. Uh, the uh, darker uh, yellow one is uh, the instant when voltage is applied to the varistor. And then the smallest one is after 3.25 seconds um, of having the varistor in the circuit. All right, there we got three different uh, types of all power strips, surge protectors, they're, they're all classified as surge, surge protectors. This one here says protected uh, and it's advertised on the box. And so uh, on this one, we'll go with the you know, simpler one first. This one, even though it looks different, it is a uh, metal oxide varistor uh, as well. Okay. Has a rating of 500 volts. That's that's what it, it's limiting. Uh, so you can see this one, even though it's a power surge protector, uh, there's the protector right there. Uh, doesn't have much. You know, it does have this five amps length to ground. So if you start having uh, current flow to ground, then this will open up. But overall, this is pretty much garbage. Um, 500 volts is, is pretty high. I don't know why they would have such a high rating on this one. Um, let's go over here. Uh, this guy, uh, this, you know, regular power strip you buy at Lowe's. Uh, these ones, uh, this one has more. See, this one has four MOVs in it. The rating for these ones are 400 volts. So, and they don't tell you the, how many MOVs they have, or they don't show you schematics or, or pictures of the insides. Um, so basically, you kind of go have to go on price, even though these were pretty much the same. This one, is, I think you're paying more for the USB charger part of it. Um, and, uh, you know, normally it's, it will protect, but yeah, it's not going to do much for you. Uh, two on each... Uh, side here and you know it's if one you know pops then then you have a, a backup you know you have three more so that's that's much better protection than, than this guy now we go to these ones these are 100 this is the whole house um, power surge protector and this is kind of a basic model bought it for about 50 bucks at uh, Lowe's and you can see on this one's a little different because here these guys are on the 120, this one's actually 240. You got the red, you got the black, you got the white, and so it's going to have six varistors on each uh, leg. These are rated at 150 volts, and you can, and the current is going to be much higher 
much, much higher protection. And you have more of them. So uh, if one fails, you have more backups than, than this guy over here. So, uh, and obviously it will protect uh, your whole house rather than just, you know, uh, a few components on one receptacle like either of these guys would. They do sell surge protectors with uh, as low as 130 volt MOVs. That uh, pretty much does it for the video. All right, and like, subscribe, and share the video uh, if you thought it was interesting. And uh, we'll see you next time.